Hey, it's Bonnie from Stan Atlantic and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Finally hanging out with a band that I've been into for the past year, Stan Atlantic. Hello. Bon, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? I'm, I'm great, I'm glad you guys are finally here in LA. We're not in LA, <laughs> but you know, close enough. Close this is the closest we get to you in the States. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations, big news with the signing of Hopeless Records. That's incredible. Thank you. Um, how, you know, how did this process happen for you guys? The Hopeless signing? Mm -hmm. um, they just kind of got in contact with us and our contract with Rude was like kind of coming to an end and they just kind of came on board and we just got talking and they were just like the best fit that we could have asked for and it's like yeah. one of those labels that like as a pop punk band like when you're kind of coming up and stuff like that's just the dream is like to be on Hopeless Records so like the fact that they were interested in us and like we got to put pen to paper was like insane so yeah. very happy to be here. It's incredible <laughs> I feel like I feel like uh, Hopeless has taken over the pop punk scene for sure like they've been they catch the artists right before they blow up 100%. <laughs> and, yes. and especially overseas. Yeah yeah dude and like with like all time low and everything like they have just such a massive roster they even had like Avenged Sevenfold at one point yeah. which was definitely one of my favorite <laughs> bands back in the day um, but yeah no it's just incredible like we couldn't have asked for like a better label to be a right. part of so yeah. <laughs> so tell me more about this upcoming debut album that's about to drop. Um, Sidewinder was incredible. Yep. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean no, I agree I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was an incredible EP, um, but you know, tell me, you know, the transition from Sidewinder to the debut album uh, Skinny Dipping that's about to drop in October. Um, I mean, it was like obviously, like when you do the an EP, the obvious next step is to do an album. So we were always like just uh, assuming that's what we would do next. Um, it's very daunting. We did it very quickly somehow, and. Um, yeah, we're very, very happy with how it turned out. I hate to use the word like mature, but like it feels like we're more of a like mature band now in right. a way. Um, and we got to experiment way more on the album because um, with an EP, like we just kind of were like, let's just put five songs that just they make sense. Let's just do it. Right. Um, whereas like with the album, we got to experiment with like different sounds, different structures, and like we could do like an acousticy kind of thing. And yeah, it was just really cool and fun to like experiment and yeah. Did you guys go back uh, with Stevie Knight on this record as well? We did, yeah. We were just like, it's not broken, let's not try and fix it. So yeah, literally everything's the same. Like we had the same, uh, mixed by the same person, James Paul Weisner, and uh, the same mastering as well, Grant Berry. And yeah, we just had this exact same team and we were like, let's just do this again, but like a step up. Now the fact that you guys were kind of experimenting with the sound, um, you know, how did he challenge you guys when you guys were, were trying to figure that sound out? Um, he took all our ideas and he was like, all right, let's fucking do something different. And we're always going to try and like, I mean, obviously it's still us. Like we didn't stray too far away right. from like our old sound or anything, but um, we just kind of took more chances and like a couple more risks. Um, and I don't know, just as like songwriters, we just definitely just developed way more and we focus more on like making sure things would go down well live and like what worked on the EP, what didn't um, and that kind of thing. Just kind of more so like honing in on like things we didn't get to do on the EP that we really wanted to try on the on the album. So, yeah. Now, I mean, with I feel like the band over the last year, you guys have been touring nonstop. So how did you find that time to sit down and write this record? Or is this a record that you had to kind of write on the road? Uh, we didn't write on the road, um, but I don't know. I think it's just one of those things we're always kind of writing like any kind of downtime we do have. We focus our efforts on writing. Um, and then when we got to kind of take it to our producer and do some writing with him and stuff, like we fleshed out all the ideas we'd already had. Um, and so it was kind of just a lot easier because we had a bunch of ideas and then we picked a bunch or we picked like 13 or whatever and then um, finished them all off. And then, yeah, it was a really weird process actually because like we wrote it all and then we, that was in like three weeks and we were just like, we were fucked. <laughs> like it was so intense. We were like, what the hell did we just do to ourselves? And then we went and played Slam Dunk, um, came back, um, wrote one more song, which was actually Lavender Bones, which is like our single, um, and then recorded the album in like four weeks. So it was like really like crazy process, I think. I feel like that's different to like most bands. I don't know what's normal, <laughs> but it felt weird. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Now, out of the 10 tracks that are on the record, um, which one kind of challenged you? Which one gave you a hard time? Uh, there's a track on there called Bullfrog. I don't want to give too much away, but it has a punk beat, and punk beats really challenge me a lot because <laughs> I can't sing over them. Um, so that was that. But then also, I think uh, 
there was a, couple, a lot of them were challenging in like different ways. Like um, some lyrically, I just really struggled to kind of like express what I was actually trying to say. Yeah. Um, and in terms of like performance, I think there's a song in there called uh, Toothpick, which okay. is like super personal. And like that, I cried when I like was like showing our like producer and the guys like the song. I was like literally crying. Uh, so that was hard, like emotionally. Um, but yeah, there's. I feel like every track was challenging in some way. We were yeah. pushing ourselves a lot with like everything we did. So yeah. Well, with Toothpick, was that the was that the most like personal song for you, um, or were there a couple others that were kind of more where you kind of had to get vulnerable? They were all super personal, <laughs> which is like scary as fuck to be like, <laughs> yeah, this is our album and every song like you're probably gonna know everything about me. <laughs> um, but Toothpick was definitely like, that was the one that was just like, yeah. Where every time I like hear it, I just like am exactly where I was emotionally when I wrote it and it just like fucks me up. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> That's rough. How did, you, how did you get comfortable in the studio um, recording that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It was hard. I guess I tried to remove myself as much as possible, like emotionally, in is like in a good sense, just so I didn't cry every take, because that would just be stupid. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I just kind of like, I don't know. I just tried to like block it out in a way, but like right. make focus on like what I was actually doing and not like how I was feeling, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And what about the guys? Like, how what did they do differently this time around with the instrumentals? Um, I think we just all around we all just like pushed ourselves way more like we would like we've practiced a lot more <laughs> um and like we just focused on like creative parts and like what makes little little things like make a song like stand out right. so we we're kind of focusing on that um and melodies and that kind of thing we all just like kind of did our own thing and pushed ourselves a lot so now tell me about your songwriting how did you learn to write um because i, I like i like your style of writing like how did you figure that out and how did you know like this could be a song? Thank you. Um, I never have known that. <laughs> I'm <still> wondering that. <laughs> I'm still like, okay, I don't know how I did that. I wish I could like, I wish I knew because then I could be like, oh, I could do that easy. Right. Um, I don't know. I think from a personal standpoint, like I've always just written about how I feel and that's like kind of all you can really do I guess like I'm not the kind of person that can be like oh I heard about this story that my friend happened to my friend like I'm gonna write about how they lost their keys like I can't do that I don't know why a lot of people can and that's fucking insane yeah. but I can't so I'm always just like I feel sad so I'm gonna write about it <laughs> um but yeah I don't know I just always kind of I've always just done it it's just something I've always done I don't know yeah. I wish I had a better answer for you <laughs> I mean do, do lyrics kind of flow for you do you think about them like oh this would sound nice or um, yeah. you know you already have a lyric but you want to kind of tweak it a little bit how do you go about that um sometimes it's weird like I feel like a lot of my lyric writing um it actually has come like and developed I think from a lot of shit that I learned in English class in school so fucking pay attention in English if you want to write songs. Yeah do it do that. Yeah like I don't know we'd go through like a lot of techniques and stuff in like English and like and book writing and poetry and that kind of shit and I've for some reason all that has like kind of stuck with me and it's something I always think about when I'm writing lyrics. Um, I don't know, sometimes you get a fucking block and you're like, why can't I think of anything that rhymes with the word day? <laughs> um, but then other times like I'll just be like writing in the studio and a lot of the times we do have to like write on the fly and sometimes shit will come out and I'm just like, I don't know how I thought of that, but I kind of <laughs> like it. Um, so yeah, there's no like rhyme or reason to it. It's just kind of something that with practice you just kind of like get used to and yeah. So how did You're a Bluebird in the Winter come out and what does that actually mean? Okay, so. <laughs> I tried to Google it and it just didn't work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is what I, uh, you take me back too far now, I have to think <laughs> about this. So when I was writing. I don't want you to be prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the best interviews, isn't it? Um, so I think originally the lyric was something like Blue Jay, like that bird. Uh -huh. And I realize, I, sometimes when I'm writing about things that I don't know about, I have to like research and I like kind of think, okay, what can I say to relate to this? Back to school once again. Exactly, <laughs> motherfuckers, stay in school. Um, yeah, so I was kind of researching a Blue Jay and I was like, it sounds cool, I want to learn more about it. And apparently they, I think it was when, when they're like migrating or something, oh, something about them, they just stand, they stay still in the, okay. in the air. You, it's too far a lot long ago. They go on idle mode. That's that what it anymore. is. <laughs> but uh, it was something about like they just stand still, and so I was kind of like just juxtaposing that with like you know you're a bluebird in the winter and I'm a renegade and a sinner. So it's like I'm fucking moving like 
heaps fast and you're just like standing still. That kind of thing. Got it. Okay. That's the gist. Now from yeah. the from the new album, is there a specific lyric that kind of stomped you? I think my favorite line uh, that we wrote was, uh, "Your words are full of shit. I'll make you swallow it." So Ooh. the working title for that song was "Eat Shit." <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit brutal, but yeah. That was and the official fun. title was, was it Clay by any chance? Uh, no, it was Lost My Cool, so. Yeah. Yeah. That Clay shit, almost. <laughs> you were close. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you tend to lose your cool, is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, in writing, yeah. <laughs> like, in person, I'm like a very timid, shy person, but like, when I'm writing, I'm like, I'll give it to you, because I can't say the shit to your face, right. so I'll <laughs> write it. Um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> now, since we kind of touched on Clay a little bit, you have a feature on Clay. Yeah. Can we talk about this feature and uh, what is it about this artist's voice that you made you want to have her on, on this song? Um, I think it was kind of less, I mean, she has an amazing voice, um, but it was kind of less about that and more so just like, it was just really genuine. Like um, we were thinking of the idea of like having a feature, but we didn't want to like force anything. So that's just like lame. Um, and we had talked to Hannah before like we were kind of mates like online and then uh, we heard she liked our band and we were like sick and then obviously we're big fans of Creeper as well yeah. um, and then we went to Slam Dunk we actually got to meet her and like we just hung out and we were just mates and then um, our manager was just like why don't we like ask her if she wants to feature on one of the songs and I was like dude that's like the perfect idea why the fuck didn't we think about that um, so yeah it was just really genuine and we hit her up and uh, she was like yeah let's do it so that is literally the story sick. yeah this is your first feature yeah, first ever. So, very excited. I'm very happy that she actually wanted to do it. <laughs> right. no, so that's, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so the skinny dipping drops uh, October 23rd, uh, 26. 26. <laughs> skinny <laughs> dipping drops October 26th on Hopeless Records. Oh, wait, yep. did we say that right? On Hopeless Records? Yeah. On Hopeless. Are you record. sure? I'm, do you yeah. think? Do you say that out loud? Like, it's I'm on Hopeless right? Records. <laughs> Hopeless. Look at my lanyard. <laughs> it's official. It's official. Stan Atlantic, guys. And you guys are on tour right now with Neck Deep. We are. Obviously, the record drops after you guys are done with the tour. So yeah. you guys are coming back to the States, right? I mean, pff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll be back for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. You guys be sure to get Skinny Dipping when it drops October 26th on Hopeless Records. Thanks for watching here on Front Row Live.